Okay, we're recording. Hooray! Hooray! And I will let people in as they hop in. Perfect. Oh, Darnell. Hello, Darnell. I'm so excited. We're doing lips, so I actually get to leave my glasses on this whole time. So I get to mostly see what I'm doing. I was pretty excited about that. <laughs> it's exciting. I'm going to pin you. Okay. Awesome. And you can maybe unpin me because I am going to be having you all like sharing fun things. So when we start switching, maybe we can unpin me or something. Okay. I don't know what I just did, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. It's fine. Yeah. That's great. Um, hi, Darnell. Welcome. Welcome. Um, and welcome everyone that is on. And I'm super duper excited for us to be talking about holiday lips. And we're going to talk a lot about like a red lip, but I also just kind of want to have us all like chat about kind of bold lips in general and different ways to achieve kind of a more bold lip um, in a way that is like that works for you. Because I always say that lip color is like the source of my superpowers. It makes me feel awesome. And it, it just, I feel like I can just do more and I can kick butt when I have not just my makeup done, but when I have a really awesome, fun, bold lip on. And yes, when we're out and about and we're in our masks, we're not necessarily going to have that bold lip on, but like, like we're doing now, so much stuff is virtual. And I really love when someone's on camera or doing stuff virtually to have a really fun, um, bold lip. So, um, I want to, I mean, let's like kind of start with what are some of the challenges and concerns and fears that we all have with a, with a bold lip? Anyone want, have anything that they want to share? It bleeds. Okay. Yep. I get those questions a lot that it bleeds and gets all, all crazy town. And we're definitely gonna talk about that. Anyone else? I just went and put on I, the boldest I have is like pink, pink, pink. Uh -huh. and I just think it just, I just think it looks like that's the attention. Like, okay. You know what I mean? Like it's distracting almost. Exactly. Okay. That's a great point. We'll totally talk about that. Um, anyone else? Matching. Like, does it have to match the eyeshadow? Does it have to match the blush? Like, where's the line you know okay that is a great great point and we will chit chat about that too anyone else what's the question <laughs> oh just like kind of like problems or, or concerns or like when we hear a bold lip if it's something you're not used to kind of what are your fears around it or if you are used to wearing it what are some of the problems that crop up with the bold lip and so Janie brought up bleeding um kelly brought up kind of like matching does it need to match the eyes or the blush or this um and christy brought up just you know when she put on a bright like pink lip it just felt like all the attention was right there and it kind of made her um you know maybe didn't make her feel awesome it was like a distraction almost you know all, i've had all of that but i also found a solution so i'll wait till we get we get through <laughs> love it as you can uh, see i have a bold lip on I Shirley is like the lip color queen. She that like Shirley, I love everything that she shares about her different lip combinations and having people guess what lip colors she has on and what combination. Um, and I, I just love all the, the lip colors you put together, Shirley. It always looks Thank amazing. You. And you, you do look stunning in a red lip. Thank but you. <laughs> I, I think everyone looks stunning in a red lip. And as a makeup artist, like I do love pushing people outside of their comfort zone in an appropriate ways when it comes to lip color, because we tend to sit and get like really super comfortable and do the same thing sometimes for literally decades. And we, and from what I, just my experience as a makeup artist, women will really, um, have like their go-to lip color. Like this is my go-to lip color. This is my go-to lip color, like the same Ruby color. Chocolates. Ruby chocolates, everybody's go-to. <laughs> right? it, 
And it's like the thing when it's like, if I can't decide like, what's my color, but so many people like that's the only color that they will wear. And, um, reds can be and bold lips can be intimidating, but I've heard time and time again, people say like, oh, I just can't wear red. I can't wear a red lip. I'm like, yes, you can. We just have to find the right color for you. So I want to just kind of talk about texture because when I'm trying to get someone situated with a new lip color, whether it be an everyday, more neutral tone color, or whether it be a bold, bright lip or a red, the first question I always ask is what texture do you feel the most comfortable in? And when I say texture, I mean a balm, a gloss, something long wearing and more matte, maybe a more creamy traditional lipstick. Are you like a one and done product type person? Or are you, do you like layering textures? Because I know for me personally, I'm really weird about textures and on the mouth too, like we can be very particular about a specific type of texture that we like the most. And so does anyone want to share like what texture do you lean towards? Like what type of product is your kind of favorite product? A gloss, a balm, a traditional lipstick, or maybe something like long wearing. Like, what's your favorite? I like I long love, <laughs> as long as it's not drying. Sorry, Marla, mom. <laughs> but I think the only thing that I don't really like is shimmer in a lip. Okay, Which, that's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah. I like a, I like, I don't have a matte on now, but I like a matte lip. I, when I joined Lime Life, I, I tried everybody's matte lip, their liquid lip, and it was so drying. And uh, when I joined Lime Life and I started using ours, I mean, it, the world changed for me. But there's times that like now I have gloss on over my, my matte lip. I like to have some shine too. I, you know, I like them all. I like the liquid. I like the regular lipstick. I like just wearing lip liner with, yeah. you know, just, I like them all. <laughs> You just have to be adventurous. That's yep. true. That is very, very true. And again, it's like you do have to be willing to try different things because there are so many different liquid lipstick formulations out there. They are not all the same. There are so many different, even like gloss formulations and lipstick formulations. Even within Lime Life, we have the shears and then we have the opaque uh, colors that do have a different texture. And like you said, Shirley, I have like, I have a billion different types of liquid lipsticks and some of them are so drying. They are absolutely miserable, <laughs> miserable to wear. And I'm so, these are the, like such a great balance of long wearing and hydration and they don't get, they, they're not like a dry matte, which is phenomenal. Um, you want to share uh, as far as texture goes? I was just going to say before I joined Lime Life, I used the same colors for 12 years. I wouldn't try anything. I use exactly the same eyeshadow, the same powder, the same mascara. Everything was exact. I go on eBay because you know what happens with companies, their eyeshadows, mm -hmm. they, they get rid of their eyeshadows. But this is the only palette I know how to use. So I'm shopping, <laughs> I'm shopping on eBay trying to match this color that I've been wearing for 12 years. And I think that that's really relatable, Shirley. And it's something that I've heard time and time again is that someone has, yeah, used the exact same product for a decade or more, sometimes two or three <laughs> decades. And then something gets discontinued or they're like, Hey, maybe I need to switch it up. And maybe I need to try something a little, little different. Um, so you guys, should we just start playing and stuff? And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks. And then we have some of you all that are going to share some of, um, your favorite bold lip combinations. And, um, some of the, the, it, this is such an individual journey. And lips, you know, it's like, again, our lips move and we're eating and drinking and speaking and all these other things. And we all wear makeup differently. Like I have found some people are so much harder on their lip color than others. I feel like I'm really easy on my lip color, but then there are some people, like I'll be working on set and I'll turn my back and someone's lip products done. And they're like, oh, 
I literally, I swear I eat it off my lips when it's sitting here. And some people are just so hard on their lip color. So there's different things that we can do to kind of troubleshoot that, but it is so subjective. So I'm really excited for some of you to share your own personal journey, finding the colors that you love and troubleshooting some of those, those things we talked about first. So one of the things when I'm doing a personally on myself or someone else, when I'm doing a red in particular or a bold lip, I usually am using more than one product. And I think I'm not always a lip liner girl, but lip liner is important. So I'm going to go through some of the, the things I have in front of me to just go through it as we talk. So I love a good lip liner with a bold lip, but especially a red lip liner is really important because it's going to help perfect the shape and we can actually give a little more dimension to that color. So having a lip liner on hand is awesome. Um, the lip scrub again, it lives on my makeup table. So I'm going to scrub my lips here in a second. Um, and then having a good concealer on hand is going to make a big difference. This is how we're going to fix some mistakes. Our translucent powder. I do love a translucent powder, but also on one of the the colored pressed powders can be a really great thing to have on hand. And I find that not a lot of people have and use a lip brush. Raise your hand if you use a lip brush for your lip routine regularly. I'm gonna turn and look on my other screen here. A lip brush is gonna make a really big difference. And it's something that um, I don't always use, but something like this, whether you're using it for your lip product or actually using it with a little concealer or powder on to clean up, having a good lip brush on hand is going to make a very, very big difference. Then my handy dandy mini Q-tips that I love to death, some Kleenex, and then always these, these bad boys here, the makeup remover wipes. So these are the things that I like to have on hand and ready to go before, before we tackle the lip. But I also love mixing products depending on the density. So it's not, oh, it doesn't always have to be this really heavy, crazy intense um, lip when we're still going bold. You can still have something that looks more like a stain or more like a flush of color that utilizes that red, utilizes that punchiness that might make it feel more wearable and approachable. So I'm going to talk about that too. So I'm going to get my, my handy dandy lip scrub and get to scrubbing because if you have dry lips or excess dead skin on your lips, when you try and do a bold lip, it's gonna cause a problem. So I always like exfoliating right before. <laughs> and pay attention to this area right in here and here in particular. And if you need to, you can kind of do this because we can get it built up. It's easier to get this area here, but I have a tendency to miss. I have a tendency to miss that area. Wipe it off. So I just scrub it on and wipe it off. Um, I'm not, there's, there's two different ways to start with a bold lip. Some people like to start by concealing the lip first and taking away all that natural color. So the lip color that you use reads more true to what it actually is. I don't typically do that, but I did wanna kind of address that and talk about that. So there is um, an approach to doing a bold lip that if I want like this, what color is this? This red <laughs> to be this red, the way to get it the most accurate to reading this color is to actually start by putting a layer of concealer on the lips first and powdering it. I don't personally like to do that. I just think that's a whole lot of extra layers. And I really love just utilizing the flush that's on the lips already. And when you scrub, you're going to have more of that flush. So there are there are people that will do that and they'll teach that. Um, I just don't think that that's practical in the, the real world for a lot of people, but I did want to address that. So now raise your hand if you line your lips first before you put on a bold lip. Are you a lip liner first gal? Okay, so again, there's two different ways to go about it. There is, I line my lips first and then I go on with the product. 
I am a lip line second kind of person. So I actually do the base of my lip color first and I line after that. There is no right and no wrong way. Um, the bolder the lip, sometimes when, when people say like the shape just gets out of hand, I feel like I have a hard time controlling it. Though those, that's when I'll lean to lining second. When we do line first, the advantage is that we can really make sure that we are creating a good barrier for um, our lip color so it's less likely to bleed. And we can actually fill in the whole lip and do a base of color with the lip liner first. And that's a great way to start. And especially if you just want, say, a flush of a color. And Christy, I'm gonna kind of address what you had mentioned where you put on this bold pink and it just felt like it was all of the attention there and it was almost a distraction. Um, are you used to wearing that color? Are you used to wearing a bold lip or is it something out of the norm for you? I don't wear lipstick ever. Oh. I mean, oh. I, can count, I, can, I can count on one hand the number of times I've worn lipstick in my life. Okay. And so I, I, I know nothing about it. <laughs> well, and that, this is such, I'm glad we're having this conversation because when we step out of our comfort zone and we do something different with makeup and it's not, but I find with lips, it's the most universal example. When we go from either wearing the same lip color all the time, or just we're not used to wearing lip product at all, lip color at all, when it's different, our brain is going to start setting off alarms being like, oh goodness, this is crazy town. What's going on? Like, no, 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 no. This is not for me. <laughs> right. And anytime we are trying something that is more bold and it is so different than we're used to it, we have to kind of do it consistently enough where our brain kind of pushes past like, hey, this is weird. I don't like it to get to that place where we can actually assess like, is this just different? So it's making me uncomfortable or is this really not authentic to, to me? Um, is this not who I am? Because again, with bolds, they can be these like bright pinks or reds or deeper berry tones. You know, there's a, a huge range. So what I like to do, and this is where we'll start. I'm glad we have this conversation is I love starting with a tinted balm. You can do a really pretty bold lip and I love these balms. And um, this ruby red is the first one that I got. And I'm so obsessed with it. And they're a lip and cheek balm. But it's such a great way to tiptoe into the arena of lip product generally because they're really nice and hydrating. And it's got a lot of great color to it. So if you're not used to wearing a bold lip, start with a texture that is more sheer. Because you're going to have that color and you're going to get the idea of what you're going for. But it's not going to be like a hardcore bold matte red or a super bright intense pink and just start by patting it on so I'm not even gonna go and I'm not even gonna like rub it on and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create more of a stain and because I've just exfoliated my lips and they have more of a flush and I don't have any dead skin even just as Patting it on gives this really beautiful flush of color that's very wearable, but it's definitely like a type of a red lip. And then I can just go in with my finger and pat it on and even take the excess and bring it up onto my cheeks. And it's gonna bring in that color more. So again, it's not so like all the colors just on my lip. When we start bringing it onto our cheeks, a little more it actually helps create that balance so all of that that rosiness and all that red isn't just focused right here so it gives a little bit more balance to what our eye is being drawn to also so this is one of my favorite ways to play in more bold color and now if when i start getting comfortable and ready to maybe play a little bit more then i can maybe go in with my lip liner and just add a little bit more definition to the shape. Really focusing on the center. That's just lip balm and liner? Yeah, and it's, I'm, I love this ruby red. 
And then you can go in if you want to even and give it a blot if you feel like there's more product on there than you want to have very little product on. But if you do a little blot, <laughs> it just creates a really beautiful flush and it wears like a lip stain. And it's such a great way to just start playing in more color. And these feel great. They're not drying, but, and I feel like they just last so well. And it's definitely like more red on the lip. Um, does that feel like it's, that's approachable for you, Christy? Like Absolutely. this type of technique. Absolutely. And this, I'm so obsessed with this ruby red. I'm, I like, I'm so in love with it. And it's- I have to tell you, I've seen Christy with, with color on her lips and she has got the most beautiful shaped lips I would die for. It's true. And so I think as I'll tell you something, you, you guys saw me, I had no lipstick on and then I put it all on while we were talking. It changes my attitude when, when I know I'm wearing a bold lip, I don't know the brain, it makes me feel like <coughs> superwoman, you know, yeah. all she did was put on some red lipstick and then bam, look at her. Absolutely. And you can like, you really see the lip shape so much more and we smile so much, you know, when we find our color where it does, we take it, you know, it is. It's well, I come from generations of women, you know, my mom and my grandma, my mom, not so much anymore, but they didn't get out of the car without putting lipstick on. They yeah. ate their lunch at a restaurant and then they put their lipstick on. I have never, ever, ever been, I call it high maintenance. It's not necessarily high maintenance, but I've hey, never hey. been a, if I'm not going to somewhere that needs makeup, I just don't put makeup on. <laughs> so, and that's, what's authentic to you. Like, and that's awesome, you know, but if, uh, you know, if you do want to kind of play and, and lip color and those things, you know, it's important to kind of do it in a way that's still authentic to you. So you can find those things that do just make you feel extra awesome, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Well, I need to learn how to do it. It just, it finishes it. And I can't, you know, like when I jumped on the first time, I'm like, oh yeah, I did. I don't even think about it. It's all right there on my makeup table, but I don't ever think about putting it on. So it, it's I want to see you in the, the lip balm, Christy, for sure. I, I only have uh, a really light one. I'll have to get one. Cause yeah. Yeah. What were you going to say, it? Shirley? Um, I was going to ask, do you wear, do you wear makeup? Do you wear foundation and eyeshadow? And I'm, I it's, this is another subject, but I'm having a huge problem color matching a foundation right now. Huge. When it got to the winter time. Um, I don't know if you guys can see, I I'm even self-conscious about putting my hands up here because my hands are totally a different color than my face. You know, my chest is a lot darker than my face. I'm having a huge problem color matching right now. So I normally just do my eyes. Yes. You, you know that your color is going to change from summer to, to winter. Mm -hmm. I always go lighter in the, in the winter time. And I have to add a second, a little bit of another color, not change color, but just add a little bit of olive two to my olive one for summertime. Cause even though I don't lay out in the sun, I still, you still, your skin. Changes. Right. Yeah. So. I need, I need to play a little bit more. Cause that's my struggle right now. Honey, make we'll it have, your maybe we'll one have a priority. Session where we're I know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll get that. We'll get that on the docket for like, okay. Sounds really good. Like, like where people can play and we'll do like a group foundation matching because I noticed like mid December to mid January, everybody like I start seeing people's pictures online and stuff and I'm like girl your foundation yeah. is the wrong color right now it happens to all of us sometimes right like it. so we'll I don't know we'll why but I put on Shinto too when I first hopped on here and I was like I'm a ghost I don't oh, know Shinto I, zero you put on Shinto, Shinto zero and Kelly was yeah. like wait what is going on <laughs> I made it work it took it took some other things but I made it work all right, well, next texture for integrating um, more, and I'm just gonna do it right over the top of what I have on before I take it off and we go to the next thing, but I am so obsessed with this Love Gloss. Um, these glosses actually have color to them, and a gloss is another great place to start if you wanna start playing with more color, and it doesn't have to be like the red. I mean, we have, I have so many here. 
like ones that are more pink and ones that are more purpley. But this love gloss is one that is a staple in my pro kit as well. And it layers on the top of colors, but it's very, it's beautiful by itself. What I love about this product, especially for someone who maybe is more uncomfortable with something heavier, or if you feel like your lips are smaller, because this is something that I hear a lot too, my lips are too small, so I can't wear bold, bright colors, I can't wear reds. Integrating a creamier texture, see how this catches the light so beautifully? This is gonna make the lips look more full and it's a great option for someone who feels like they get dry lips really easily and are nervous about a lot of color. And again, you can use a liner with this if you really wanna bump it up. A gloss and a liner are great, but this is a really great solution for anybody who feels like their lips are a little small and we just focus on this Cupid's bow. And it's so fast and easy. That is this another one advantage. This smells so good. It smells so good. It oh smells so God. good. And again, I could go in before or after with my red lip liner if I wanted and just perfect that shape or bump up the color, whatever I wanted to do. And if you want to make your, your red lip more long wearing, because these lip liners are enduring, they are waterproof and they really, really do last. Um, if you're doing something more sheer, even doing a light, um, I just hit myself in the face with this, um, a light layer and a light base of your lip liner underneath before you top it with a gloss is really going to increase the longevity and wear. But I feel like these last so well. And again, it's such a pretty color and because it's more of a, it's a more of a blue red, I find that true reds and blue reds are really universal and they're really beautiful. So I'm gonna take a second while I'm in this because I want to show what I'm talking about when, I when I'm talking about color. So this is another, um, another thing that people struggle with when they're like, oh, I can't wear red. I, you know, it's just not for me. Red is a huge category. Like red is not red is not red is not red. Like there are so many different reds out there because red is a primary color. Like when we say true red, I'm referring to, and our lipstick number 103, I feel like is a, a really beautiful true red. Like this is a primary color red, but do you see how different it is from what is on my lips? Like this is a true red. This is more of a blue red, it has more of those blues in there. When we go to something like the Candy Apple, which is one of our enduring lip colors, this is a warmer red. This is an orangey red. And it has more of those orange tones in there. You know, then we can shift to something that is more, let's try this one. This is one of our, and I think this one doesn't get enough love. This is Shirley Temple. This is one of our lip shears. This is another great option if you're a little nervous to do something a little more intense. This Shirley Temple lip shear, see how it's more sheer, but this is actually more in that true red um, family. Now let's, is that 207? That is 206. I'm gonna put on, I'm gonna show you 207 here. I just shot it in my hand. So on 207 is another lip shear, but this is a berry. So this is a much more blue in it, berry tone. And do you see how that range is really vast? And um, again, it's about how it makes us feel, but it's what is most appropriate for our skin coloring. So when you, you know, the same, and I've said this before, when things are the similar, the similar, when things are similar, when they are the same, it's going to look more natural. So anybody that has more of the, that warmth in their skin um, in that Shinto kind of family, you're going to, any, I say, I kind of say anybody can wear that true red, but when you have more of those warmer tones, a warmer orangey red is going to look phenomenal on you. When you wear a blue red, it's going to look more bold and more punchy. It's not that it's going to be wrong necessarily. It could feel off, but it, it could, um, it's going to highlight that difference with that blue in the lip color versus that warmth in the skin. And it goes the other direction. If you have more of those olive -y tones. When I say olive, I mean like with our foundation, 
you know, that's going to have more of a peachiness to it. Anybody that has more pink in their skin, if you really lean into more of those blue reds, that is going to look more natural. And if you wear a more orangey red, that is going to look a lot more dramatic. So that's another thing to take into consideration is play in those colors and find what you really feel like is appropriate for you. Now me, I have blue hair. So that's a whole other like world. You know, if you have more red in your hair, my mom is a redhead. Um, and if you have more of those, um, amber, you know, maybe amber tones, whatever is that more dominant color, when you lean into something that is similar to that, it's going to look more wearable and you're going to be able to get away with something more bold because you're not competing with an undertone. Does anyone have any questions about that? And I really find that blue reds work very well uh, for a lot of people. Um, but again, if they have a lot of warmth in their hair um, and a lot of warmth in their skin, something that's very berry will have that contrast and undertone and it can actually look more bold. I have so warm, right? What? This is warm, right? Yeah. Wait, All hold right. on. I can't see your hair. Hold on. Well, but you have some of that. Is it like more orangey or is, I, I just can't see on my phone or because I know it's you've had those like, pinks and purples in there. Yeah. It's like more rosy now, but it's more, so, I don't know. because it's more rosy, like any, those blue reds are, if it were more like red, red and fiery and orangey versus like pinks. And I say like the blue reds match up with like the pinks and purples really well. So just kind of play and see, because it's not like so dominant as it was before. I feel like, well, from what I'm saying, it's still pretty subtle. And so that kind of goes along with what you were asking, Kelly, with what do I do with my blush? Does it have to match my eyes? It's that same concept that if I have like a fire engine red on my lip, like a true red, like what am I going to match that to? I'm not going to put fire engine red on my cheeks. That's you what know? I did today. Why not? What but it's like, I mean, you could, but I'm saying for me personally, that's not what I would do. Sometimes mm -hmm. a really bold lip color is a standalone and we can just bring a hint of that into the cheek. Like I love uh, Ruby red is a really great option for a cheek stain. If you're doing um, a red lip, it's very subtle. Sometimes I just do bronzer and highlighter when I'm doing a real red lip. Sometimes I really don't do a lot of blush and I just do a little bronzer and highlight and I let that kind of stand alone or I bring just a subtle amount into the cheek. But it's the same thing, like I like the, the lip and the cheek to be a happy family. And then what we do with the eyes, again, it's that when we're doing the same, if it's all the same kind of color palette, it's going to blend and um, be less dramatic. If yeah. say I do um, a really pretty like gold warm toned eye, and then I do a really cool toned lip, like a punchy pink or a berry, it's actually going to stand out more than if I did a warm toned gold lip. So okay. again, it's like, think in your mind, like how bold do I want this to be? When you're wow. using two different undertones, it's going to look more bold. If you want something that is going to be more um, wearable and less um, kind of like Christy said, like distracting or less dramatic, um, you know, stick with those similar tones and it's going to just come across you. as much more wearable. I've been playing with things because I do like mixing things. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't really done a ton, I guess, since I colored my hair. So now I, I don't know where, where I stand with everything. So I have <laughs> cupcake, right? And then candy apple. And then this is cupcake and candy apple mixed. And I do love that together. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then this is cherry pie, candy apple, and then those two mixed. And I love that too. And I love, that's a really great way to show, like, I love you mixing those pinks and those purples and showing, using those reds. Um, and when we did the, the holiday ugly sweater party, the red lip that I did, I actually used the orange red and the blue red to give dimension um, that one. to uh, my lips. But I'm going to do really oh. quickly, I'm going to, I just want to do lipstick really fast and I want some of you guys to kind of share some of your favorite little um not little but some of your awesome tricks so I'm actually going to do a traditional lipstick because 
I have done enduring lip colors before, but I haven't actually done a traditional red lip in a while. And this is a true red and it matches my doggy's outfit on my shirt, Love you know, right? So I got my, my lip brush handy. I got my concealer handy. I got my powder handy and we are going to just go for it. And that's the thing when you're doing a bold lip, you just got to kind of go for it. And if something goes wrong, you just fix it. Um, and I, there's something very satisfying about applying a bold lip straight from the tube. <laughs> it just feels so good. I always start in the middle. Again, where we start with the product is where the most is going to be applied. And I do a little blot and it's good up here. And I always do this like really dorky little half grin, but it holds my lips taut so they're not smooshing around. The smoosh doesn't work for me. <laughs> And you just get it on. And I like getting more product on there. That's what works for me is having more product because it's going to increase the longevity for me. And now I'm going to take my lip brush and I'm going to pat it in. And I'm going to do this kind of motion that I've taught when I do lip liner. I'm going to grab this bad boy. I love these so much when I'm doing something that requires a little more detail. And I'm just using my brush because I didn't go all the way to the edge of my lip and all the spots with the lipstick because again, I like to move the product to where I want it to be and not like try and get it there the first shot. That's how things get out of control. And on this side, I always mess it up. I always mess up this side. I always get this side like perfect. And I'm like, oh, you're so good at this. And I do the other side and I'm like, well, that's it. But it's okay, because we just fix things. Now, I'm going to grab my little Q-tip. Now here's how many times have you had a lip line that you kind of got wonky and then you went to fix it and you're like, oh, I just made it worse. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and it like blends and it smudges. And I do that all the time. It's okay to have a little bit of makeup remover or a little bit of um, like, oh, these makeup remover wipes or lotion. So this is one of my little tricks I'm going to show you if you mess up. So you're not just like smudging it and blending it into your face like lipstick will do. I take my little baby and I take my makeup remover wipe and I actually wrap the end of my tiny Q-tip in my makeup remover wipe so I have more control. And then I just go along that line and clean it up. I just And can fix it like that. Then I'm going to take my concealer and I'm going to go in. There's two ways you can do this. You can do a concealer that matches or you can do a concealer that's a little lighter. Depends on how you want to highlight the edge of your lip. And we just go And this is great to just really perfect the shape or to clean up any shenanigans that may have happened. Because again, like it's so easy to fix. And I mixed a concealer that was just a little bit lighter. I'm blending it out. And I can do that all the way around. And then this is a little trick. I don't always blot, but what you can do is you can take sometimes a good eyeshadow brush works for this, your translucent powder, hmm. and you powder through here. Isn't that blotting? No. <laughs> I mean, I'm setting yeah. through it and here's what I'm doing. I'm setting through there 
So I actually set it through that. Then I do another quick coat. Yeah, and that was just the tissue. And I'll show you what's on the tissue. There's not very much on there. A little bit on there from when I, I pressed it through, but it's you kind of setting it, doing a second layer if you really want it to last like extra long with a creamier formulation. That's a really great trick. It's like if you have a blemish and you're trying to build product on it and you do your concealer and then you set it with your powder and then you add a little more concealer, it's the same concept with I know that product <laughs> to try and layer it to get a little bit more opacity and density. Um, I think Marilyn Monroe used to put on, I mean, I have to look it up. The number of layers that her makeup artist would put on her lips were absolute crazy town, like crazy town, how long they would spend and how many layers of lip product she had. Um, and it was part of her look. She had crazy layers of products on her lips. And then what you can do just to finish it off with either your translucent powder or a colored powder is to now trace along the edge with your powder and that's really gonna help keep it from <laughs> bleeding and feathering. Which well, uh, that's a way better trick than just the liner after. Yeah. No, it's, 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 I do things in layers to really create the shape that I want, the texture, and then really to get the longevity that I want in a product. Cause again, like, granted when I'm on set now I'm in a mask, but when, Traditionally, it's like, I would do something and I cannot touch my makeup all day and I can't look like a crazy person if I'm supposed to be making everyone feel amazing all day long. So those little things, they take I a little more that. time, but it's not time consuming. And they really help keep the product in place, keep it from feathering and bleeding. And then it's all individual, like how much product is appropriate for each person individually um, with what you're gonna be doing. And then I always do a final check on the corners of my mouth. I don't think I've ever seen you put powder around. I love that so much. Oh, I've done it before. I did, I did one in the vampire when I did a pink lip in the vampire a while ago. It's my trick. I don't always, I don't always show that. Keep the good stuff for you all. Secret. Keep the good stuff it's a classy for you tip. It's a classy tip. No, like. it's Stephanie, is that 103 you're wearing? Yes. So this is the true red. And um, I and I did the um, the true red lip liner as well with this. And I just did two layers of the true red. And again, like I could play with the shape and I could do more of a berry around the edge and blend it if I wanted to add a little different dimension. Um, which what I've done before and I've shown that, but I did want to show something that I haven't shown before with like a traditional lipstick and a true red. And these are the steps that I take to really get a perfect shape. And then if you really need to check the shape, this is my final check. Do this and make sure that you have all of your areas the same. I love, I do love the finish and the look of the lipstick, of the perfect lipstick, because it's not shimmery, but it is definitely not matte. Well, like, it has it's a sheen. Lipsticks are so nourishing. Yeah. So they don't dry out. Reds can be very dry. The pigment for reds and especially orangey reds, there's just something about them. It's universal. They're just, it's a much more dry pigment for some reason. Yeah. And, um, it is so nice and creamy that it feels good, but like you said, it catches the light. And again, it's really going to help if someone feels like they maybe have smaller lips, they're concerned about a more bold or deep color, making their lips look small. Leaning into a sheen is going to really help make the lips look bigger and fuller. It's not going to be like, kapow, I have glitter on my lips. I know. It's just very <laughs> natural and it's just a lovely finish. Yeah. So I, like I know some of you all have some tips you wanted to share from your personal experience. And I'm so excited for this. So who would like to go first? I think since, I just, go? since I just redid my lips, I'll, I'll go. Yay! So one of the things that I just really have to do, because I am getting more and more um, lines as I get older. And, but I like the lipstick. I just love lipstick. So... 
I don't know if you guys, you probably couldn't see me because you were focusing on Stephanie, but I'll put my foundation or a, a concealer around my lips first and I blend it in. I even put a little powder on it. I didn't put, I was going to put powder on after I did. Wait, you put it through this, through the tissue. Is that what you did? I did that till, so I was, because I was going to be doing two layers. So I powdered through. So okay. I to do two layers and then I powdered around the edge when I finished. So what I've done, I'm sorry, Kelly. I was just giving the cue to Stephanie. You're good. Okay. So what I've done before, not knowing what that trick was, is I, I pursed my lips together. And then I seal the edges and now my lips are still soft and they still have the shine because they have, you know, everything on them. Um, and I just used number 26, number 20, no, I'm sorry, not 26, 206, 207, love and my liner. And you know that while we were watching? <laughs> yeah, I did. And I owe, and I thought, oh, I have to do it over because I remembered Stephanie says your lip line is merely a suggestion. So I brought it up a little bit to make my what is that? The Cupid's bow. Cupid's bow. Mm -hmm. More pronounced. Love it. That's very pretty. I like that you added 206 and made it a little bit brighter. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. And well, I love that tip that you started with the concealer around the edge and powdered it. And then you did that second powder. And you said that works really well for you with the lines. It does. I can. And I used to be such a lick lipper. No, a lip licker. <laughs> lip licker. <laughs> Say that five times. Easy for you to say. <laughs> right. I used to lick my lips all the time. And so um, I don't as much anymore, but um, because I, I like my lipstick to stay nice. And um, so there you go. Beautiful. I love that. Those are such great tips. And that's a really beautiful color combination. Yeah. Okay, who wants to go next? Well, I'll go. Um, so as you guys know, I did a whole series where I was wearing a different color, a different lipstick every day for, I don't know, whenever I ran out. Um, anyhow, I kept running into colors that I didn't think looked good on me and they were all the bold ones. And then they'd look messy on me. And what I found is, for, first of all, one thing I, I do every day, now I, in all fairness, my makeup is not what it normally is. I did a five product makeover just before I came to this meeting. So I, all I had was candy apple, no liner, no concealer. I didn't have anything to play with. But what I do, because as we get older, our lips get smaller and they're kind of like our, our boobs, you know, they kind of start sagging. So to give them a better, a fuller look, I always take our lightest uh, lip liner and I outline my lips. So I put it on the outside of my lip. Um, it's not a strong color, but it gives my lips this, the, that's exactly it. It gives the lips a sense that they're fuller. Um, probably not anything you have to worry about, Christy. It's just when you get, you know, older. Um, so, and then, and, and then what I would do is, um, for me, what I needed to do to make all these colors, I found what I needed to do is, uh, one is I do take my lip color. And I, if it doesn't look comfortable to me, I take some off my lips and I put it on my, on my cheeks and it just seems to bring it together. The other thing I do sometimes is I'll take a little bit and I'll put it on my eyelids um, to add again, to bring this whole thing together. The last thing that I have found is critical is what you're wearing. You match well, very well. <laughs> yeah, I picked it for a reason. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, it, it's really important you have, for me. I have put, I'll put my lipstick on, I get my makeup on and I'm still not happy with it. Then I'll go and I'll change my top to something that flatters it more. And then it's like night and day. What the color you're wearing really has a lot to do with, 
what colors you're wearing on your face, not your foundation, because your foundation is your foundation. But when you're starting to talk, particularly if you're talking a bold lip, it really has to be complementary to whatever you're wearing. So at least for me, but then right. I'm the kind of person that centers everything. So go figure. But I, I find that the um, feathering is a big deal because I'm, se you know, 72. So I have lots of, uh, I don't call them smoking lips because I never smoked. I call them smooching lips because I have grandchildren. And <laughs> there you go. Smooch a lot when you do that. Uh, and a husband, of course. But anyhow, the, um, the lines will cause a liquid lip or anything. It glossed, it will feather. And um, so liner is critical for that. And I will double line. And Stephanie, I, I will oftentimes come back. I have done the same thing that you, I've never done the, the uh, translucent powder with the napkin, but I'm definitely gonna try that. I've never done what you, you do, uh, Marla. I'm definitely gonna try that. Um, but I have, uh, I've used concealer on my lips to help, uh, uh, particularly if I'm using a lipstick, I will put a little bit of concealer to hold it in place. So it lasts longer so that I, it doesn't, cause our standard lipstick is not long enduring. So uh, to make it last longer, um, if I feel it's too strong, I will use, I will use concealer to bring the tone down a bit. So there's something else that I do that is so important as we get older and our lips get thinner. You've got to do that so that you don't get it on your teeth. Oh yeah. You know? Or, or a, um, a, t a, what is this, Q-tip, -tip. and just go around the inside so that you don't get the lipstick on your teeth. That's it's, a great tip. And if, you have, <laughs> and if you have Invisalign, the Invisaligns are just a magnet for that dark color. Ooh. Oh. Never done that. Thank, Thank goodness you. I don't have those anymore, but. And good for you, good good for you, you that you did have them though. Pardon me? I said, you must be happy that you did have them. I'm very happy. I'm very, very happy, very happy. But I would have never um, wore a bold lip before doing Lime Life. And so then when I started doing, having the Invisalign and then wearing them, then I, I just swore that those Invisaligns were like this magnet because it would just, I'd end up having lipstick everywhere. But and I think because I've learned through the process that less for me personally, less is more because if I put too much, that's when it gets everywhere. And so like I do what Shirley does and I do the light nude around. I've, I've been doing that whoop, with a dark color around the lips just to kind of stop that bleeding and then do um, like tonight I did the true red. And candy apple is a little orange for me and I tend to like to mix colors. So, but I mix them where I, and I've been using a brush more because then I get very little and not, because mm -hmm. there's so much that comes on the applicator. I mean, and it does not take much, especially the darker the color, the less you need. So I like to put like tonight, I put the candy apple on the bottom lip and then I put angel food on the upper lip and then smushed them together. So then it just made candy apple not quite as orangey, at least for wow, me. Oh, great. And then, then, then I put my love lip gloss on. So that's what I did tonight. I don't know if you can tell because my lighting here is not as good as it should be, but um, that's, that's what I like to do. And that's what I've learned. Less is more for me, so. Yeah. Those are great tips. And I love that you and Shirley do that double line technique with that lighter color around first um, and how you all use like concealer and things differently. And like, and I love the difference that for you, you know, less is more and that's really important um, because I do it such a different way because I love a ton of lip product on my lips, but I'm so easy on my lip color. And I, like, I just am like, I've been wearing so much lip product for so long. I swear I can like, eat a double cheeseburger and my lips would still be perfect. Uh, with all and that's, probably, that's probably the problem because I didn't really wear, I mean, I could put a full face of, of makeup on, but lipstick wasn't always the thing that I would put on. But now I, I do put lipstick on because I feel almost naked now if I have a full face of makeup, if I don't have lipstick on too. 
you, yeah. you know what I, you know I used um, because we're in mass so often uh, I use a only the enduring lip liner for color if I'm going to be going out and I have to wear a mask and I wear a mask that I, I wear the bridge so that the the um, mask doesn't lay down on my lipstick but the color wears longer and it doesn't if you use that and you use your setting spray then you don't then your makeup and your lipstick doesn't get all over your mask and, and it's not, getting it all over the mask isn't the problem. The problem is after it gets all over the mask, it's also all over your face. Yeah. But I was I wore a specific color to show my hairdresser just so she because she was looking for a color and I put on a specific color and I was so excited for her to see it and I took my mask off and it was like so. Well, that's sad. Shirley, <laughs> you said something I want to ask clarification. You put spray over your lipstick and it helps stay? No, 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 that I, I use, uh, no, I use concealer on my lips and, and I've also used powder and then, and I will use, if I put powder on them, I will put setting spray on. Oh, okay. I can see that. Okay, good. Although I learned tonight uh, or today, I don't know even what time it is, uh, that setting spray can actually operate uh, operate without powder. I thought setting spray, you had to have powder on for it to function. And I had a client who wears our foundation, but she never wears powder and she's ordering in setting spray. And I was like, oh, let's. so we went ahead with the order. Three orders today, it was great. Nice. Love it, Shirley. No, and that setting spray, like, like you said, I thought you said that you put the lip liner on and then you use a setting spray to increase yeah. longevity, but the setting spray, and you all know I'm like crazy town obsessed with it. I mean, this setting spray w will actually increase the wear of kind of anything. It doesn't have to be a powder product. So technically, I mean, like there are people that will actually mix the setting spray in with their foundation when they do their foundation to make their foundation wear. So okay. in theory, you could uh, use it with a lip product too. Um, because of the way it works, it's really designed to increase the longevity and wear and durability of any of your makeup products. So that especially so cool if you're wearing a mask and you're doing whatever, if you're especially if you're just doing a lip line or something like that or something more matte or I mean anything, go to town with this. Like this will only increase the longevity and wear of anything that you use it with. And you could actually like mix it in if you're using a lip brush and mix it into the product that way and try and see how it, it impacts the wear. But again, like quantity is everything. And I think, I mean, everyone here is gonna have like their exact right quantity for them that works on their lips. And it depends on the texture and it depends on all these other factors. So that's why the biggest thing that I can say when it comes to a bold lip is it does take playing in it. It does take trying multiple days in a row, trying different textures, different techniques, like you saw, like, uh, there are so many different ways to go about it. Um, and especially depending on the texture of product you use and the quantity and all of that. So it's really about playing and finding what is right for you. Because like, yeah, what's right for me might not be exactly what works for Shirley or Jamie or Kelly, or, you know, we try a different technique on a different day. So it's kind of about being willing to step out of your comfort zone and try different colors and different techniques and different textures to really find what is the thing and the combination and the um, kind of process that makes you feel the most awesome. Because it's out there and now I'm not going to want to wash my face because I love well, it. I'm definitely going to try 103. I'm definitely going to, I know I've worn it before, but I haven't worn it in a long time. So Christmas, I'm putting 103 on. I love our red so much. This is, this is one thing with Lime Life and our lip colors, we have the best reds. And like I said, red is not red is not red. Like I showed you, showed you, like we have, you know, I love this orange or ice. I love candy apple. Um, I love uh, cherry pie. Cherry pie is like this. If someone's looking for a red, like, and they're afraid that they can't wear red cherry pie, I feel like yeah. is everybody's red. But even with our traditional lipsticks, you know, this, 103 is such a great true red and 104 does have a little bit more of that blue in there and then with our liners and you know this ruby red our lip shears that we have um 206 like there's so many great colors so again like it depends on the opacity 
and the color family and the texture and all of that stuff, just what works for you, because I'm so obsessed with the reds that we have. There is, you can find the right one if you're willing to try. I truly believe that. Yeah. Such good tips and tricks tonight. I love this. And it was perfect right on an hour. That's awesome. I know. Getting better at this, Marla. Getting better at it. (laughs) Well, at 9.30, I start going because I'm on central time. Well, and I love what, I just appreciate you all hopping on. I appreciate everyone um, being a part of the conversation. Um, I always love the perspective that you all bring and your willingness to share because that's what this is about is when more people share their experience um, and their perspective on what works for them, it just helps more people and it allows more people to um, to learn and, and to try different things. So it means a lot to me that you all come and that everyone's willing to participate and share and it would just makes for such a great um session that we have weekly so okay i I have a question i have a question what's that um is is it i i i've got contacts on so i can't read is it darnell Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay darnell which color red are you gonna wear come on you're still here you can chat let's see which one and when are you gonna show us i want to know jen too oh yeah Ruby, Ruby red. red, yay! Or winner. And Darnell, I love your love it. picture and your dimples are just so That's cute. adorable picture. Yeah. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> I'm keeping it muted here. <laughs> <laughs> it's 9:30 here in Texas. I'm ready for bed. But yeah, I am. I I'm gonna try the Ruby Red. I've only started wearing lipstick since we've been doing all of the Zoom meetings at work. So I'm for the most part working from home. And I've really gotten into the lipsticks now, but I've it's not here. gone into the reds. It's time. Do it. Yeah, it's the time. Do I it. <laughs> I will. You want it. We're gonna want a picture. But like, okay. that's the thing is that Ruby Red, I think with your coloring, it's going to be so beautiful. So beautiful. I'm excited to see it. <laughs> All right. I'll do it. Well, while you guys were yakking, I put on my uh, candy apple and cupcake. Very beautiful. beautiful. I love that combo. That's such a pretty combo. I want to try that. Thank you. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. So fun. All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming. This is another awesome Ulster Beauty session. I love everything you all have to share. And we'll see you next time. All right. Good night, you guys. Good night.